First of all, I'd like to apologize for um, before we started an hour later. We just wanted to make sure that everything is in order before we begin this program today. My name is Fatih Elika Muloshi, and I would be the MC or the host, if you like, of uh, this very important occasion staged by Bridging Gaps Advisory. It's the, it's the fourth, fourth of its kind, rather, and if you've been following, you'll realize that um, this has become a constant event in our Bridging Gaps Advisory's um, yearly events. And uh, I see that our guests, our special guests, are already seated, and I would like to welcome all of them to this very important occasion. And I'm um, pretty sure that we're all aware that the vice president was supposed to be here, but unfortunately she had other uh, engagements. But she's been ably represented by the Minister of Foreign Affairs, uh, Dr. Momadou Tangara, and you're also welcome. Thank you so much uh, for coming within the short notice. Uh, and so this particular event today is, of course, like I said in the beginning, staged by Bridging Gaps Advisory. And uh, it, it has been, you know, staged today in collaboration with the International Trade Center through their uh, She Trades Initiative. And uh, Bridging Gaps Advisory did tell me that they're very much happy and proud to be partnering with the International Trade Center in this very fourth edition of their Women in Leadership Forum. And if you've been following developments in this country, you will agree with me that uh, the ITC have been very, has been very crucial in shaping the gender dynamics of this country, especially when it comes to uh, women in trade, women in business, women entrepreneurs, by providing them the skills and just introducing them to sustainable ways of navigating through the value chain in this vast ecosystem and doing that also through a private-public partnership. And so it's important that uh, for Bridging Gaps Advisory every year to come up with events like this where different stakeholders can come together and take stock of uh, what has been done, the commitments made in improving women's uh, participation in business but also sustaining um, their uh, you know, sustaining the ecosystem. This is even more crucial during this time when the world is experiencing a global pandemic and we're in a second wave of a mutating virus. And we know that in uh, situations like this, uh, the vulnerable groups are the most affected and, and women at a very center or an integral part of that group. So they're disproportionately affected. So how do we come together and carve out sustainable ways of improving or accelerating their gains in this, uh, in this ecosystem is very much important, especially for women entrepreneurs. So I'm pretty sure that we are going to hear a lot of that, and we are going to hear from people as well uh, who have been very much, uh, you know, keen on women empowerment. Uh, I see some of them here, and Sidibe, Madam Sidibe, is here with us. And I'm pretty sure if you were here in the last edition, you will realize that um, some gender champions have also been revealed, and this is very important for bridging gaps in their Women in Leadership Forum. So today also we'll take stock of those uh, gender champions who were really, um, revealed in the last edition and what they've been doing since then, how far they've come and what are you know the other steps that they're willing to take in, in this same endeavor that we're talking about. And uh, it's going to be very interesting and I refuse to stick to a script because it is going to be interactive since we're going to have different sessions where our different stakeholders involved in today's program will talk to us about the strides they've taken in improving women empowerment, especially uh, uh, their socioeconomic status in this country. That being said, I'm not going to talk too much. I, I believe we've been seated for almost an hour now for some of us. And so I'll go right into it. I'm sure Ramatula is not here, the chairperson of the Bridging Gaps, but I'm sure she's watching us live and she's here with us in spirit. And I believe Fatulet will agree to that. Now, at this juncture, uh, I'd like to, of course, uh, welcome a representative from uh, Bridging Gaps Advisory. Uh, they've been very much committed and going all out to make sure that today's event is indeed a success. Ladies and gentlemen, join me welcome Madam Fatule Jalo as she comes to deliver her welcoming remarks. Thank you very much, Fatu. Thank you for that wonderful introduction. Once again, our apologies for the late start. Um, 
Your Honourable Minister of Trade, um, C.D. Keta. Honourable um, Minister of Foreign Affairs, uh, Mr. Momodu Tangara. Um, representative from the Ministry of Gender, Women and Children's Affairs, Ms. Rohi Bite, Permanent Secretary. Um, Your Excellency, High Commissioner, um, British High Commissioner, David, Mr. David Belgrove. Um, government officials, private sector partners, um, international development agency representatives, invited guests, press and media personnel, distinguished mm. ladies and gentlemen, all protocols respectfully and duly observed. I am indeed delighted to welcome you all to the fourth edition of the Women Leadership Forum, organized by Bridging Gaps Advisory in partnership with She Trades and the Ministry of Trade, Industry and Employment of the Gambia. I am today representing the CEO of the firm, like Fatu Alika said, um, Ms. Ramatulai Gay, who couldn't, hear, who couldn't be here with us today. Uh, my name is Fatu Led Jalo. I am an associate consultant at the Bridging Gaps um, Advisory Services. This year's WLF, Women's Leadership Forum, being the fourth edition, is a special and distinct one. Due to our partnership with She Trades, and as the world recovers from the COVID-19 pandemic. Over the past 12 months, you will all agree with me that the world has witnessed an unprecedented level of disruption brought about by the pandemic, which has impacted all spheres of our lives, including politics, economics, social, cultural, and technology. According to the UN Social Economic Report, Rapid Assessment, Impact Assessment, in August 2020, there has been dire consequences in the Gambia um, business environment, especially for the micro, small, and medium enterprises, MSMEs, which make up majority of the business sector of the Gambia. According to this UN report, the following findings were published in relation to the um, to the majority of the businesses being made up of self-employed women and young people. It says that 48% of businesses have experienced a partial loss of income, 48%. It says that 43% of businesses have scaled down their operations, meaning they're not operating on a full-time basis. It says that 23% of businesses have experienced a total loss of income. Some people have totally lost their livelihoods. It says that 19% of businesses have experienced a shutdown, complete shutdown of their operations due, due to COVID-19. And we all know the impact of that in a developing economy like the Gambia, which has a high dependency ratio in families. And also of the same report, it says that 11% have experienced total job losses. It means that they couldn't sustain all their full-time employees. So they need to make, uh, they had to make some redundant. So um, today it's important to ask, what can we do to mitigate these many challenges of the pandemic? Hmm? I hope today we're able to reflect and come up with concrete actions to address these consequences and moving forward. You will even notice that our annual WLF, which used to happen every no November of every year, was postponed to March. So therefore, it is evident that in COVID-19 trying times, nothing goes as planned. The event today has strictly been limited in numbers, as you can see. We used to attract over 300 participants, but today we had to just limit the number to 50 participants, and hence the live streaming on Kerfatu. So right now, um, we'll share this live streaming link on social media, and if you can share it with your personal and professional networks so that they can also join us through the live streaming on Kerfatu, that will be great. Today also, we shall discuss how this pandemic has affected the business plans of women. In particular, 
especially the she trades beneficiaries. We underscore the crucial role of technology, um, um, the crucial role of technology in helping many businesses survive during the pandemic and how forging ahead requires determination and resilience on part of women entrepreneurs. Ladies and gentlemen, Bridging Gaps Advisory is proud to be associated with She Trades the Gambia under the Ministry of Trade, Industry and Employment. In recent times, gender equality has been a priority action for most countries as we strive to achieve a truly empowered generation of women and girls. Today, it is refreshing to see that She Trades has complemented government efforts in creating that enabling environment whereby Gambian women can fully participate in economic activities. We at Bridging Gaps Advisory are very glad because these are the type of partnerships we seek every day. We understand that supporting women to develop their skills while building their capacities to take advantage of av available resources and opportunities requires a collaborative effort. Bridging Gaps advisory team and the She Trades team have worked tirelessly in the past couple of days and months to ensure that this forum today takes place. We hope that today's event will increase awareness of government and other stakeholders on the needs of women entrepreneurs for an effective and quicker recovery. We hope to connect women entrepreneurs with the various stakeholders in the ecosystem to benefit from services such as digital technology, innovation, and financial support. We also hope to recognize and celebrate the work of She Trades in the Gambia as a flagship program achieving the needs of women entrepreneurs helping them to combat their many challenges of trade inclusiveness, competitiveness, and sustainability. WLF 2019 witnessed the unveiling of the first cohort of the gender champions in the Gambia. Today, we shall also hear about the many actions and interventions of these gender champions, which were previously unveiled in our 2019 Women Leadership Forum, and also, will also reveal the second cohort of Gender Champions 2021, and you will hear about their many commitments. As I come to the end of my speech, please allow me to acknowledge the hard work and commitment of the team that made this event come to life amidst a pandemic. Ramatulai Bige, our founder and CEO of Bridging Gaps Advisory, has really supported us from a distance. She is what I truly call an epitome of visionary leader who genuinely, genuinely believes in empowering her team and the women around her. Ellen Mendy, our event manager at Bridging Gaps Advisory, for her hard work and dedication to this event. All the She Trade staff at the Ministry of Trade, including Muzukeba Sise, Mr. Abdullahi Jame, the Deputy Permanent Secretary, Ms. Anna Wada, the Director of Trade, uh, Mr. Kutubo Jaju, and the rest of the team at the Ministry. All International Trade Center um, staff in the Gambia and Geneva, Ms. Fatumenga Jalo, Mr. Abdullahi Baji, Mr. Raymond Moza, Elena Maya Bastin, Maria Jonah, thank you very much. To all our speakers, invited guests and panelists today, we're grateful for you taking out time outside your busy schedules to add value to this event. To the media for being here to cover this flagship program, we thank you. I thank you all for your attention. Enjoy the program. Thank you so much, Fatulet, uh, for that uh, brilliant welcoming remark. And uh, thank you so much for also formally welcoming our special guest uh, to this program. And if you are locked on Facebook, just kindly share the link. It's been streamed on Kirfatu. I had a lot of people tell me that they want to come join this event today. But when they see on the flyer, strictly by invitation, they hold back. So you can uh, take this opportunity to share with them as well so that they can be a part of the event today. 
And uh, I'll just move straight to uh, the next statement we have here. Uh, like Fatu mentioned, uh, the Ministry of Trade is right at the heart of this whole initiative, the She Trades Initiative, especially, uh, which is being funded by the International Trade Center. And of course, we are talking about a public sector private ship. So it's important that the government is also a part of whatever we are doing at national level. So I have the honor, on, uh, honor of calling uh, Honorable C. D. Cater to deliver the statement uh, from the Ministry of Trade, Industry, Regional Integration and Employment as the Minister. Honorable, you're welcome. Join me, welcome him, please. Cabinet Member, uh, Minister of Foreign Affairs, right, Your Excellency, the British High Commission, present, Honorable Member, uh, other Ministers present, Permanent Secretaries, members of the Diplomatic and Councillor Corps, business leaders, private sector participants, members of the media, invited guests, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. It gives me great pleasure to participate in this laudable event, which is the fourth edition of the Women in Leadership Forum on the team She Trades and Women Entrepreneurs in the New Normal. May I take this opportunity to thank you all, all those who have made this event possible and acknowledge the appreciation for ITC, EIF, and the OPEC Fund for their continuous commitment, collaboration, and support to the Sea Trade Project in Gambia. The Sea Trade Gambia Project was launched in February 2019 for a three-year period and is implemented by the ITC and the Ministry of Trade in the, and Industry. The objective of the project is to enable Gambian entrepreneurs, women entrepreneurs, to benefit from participating in the economic to the objective of the project is to enable Gambian women participate and benefit in the economic benefits that the project envisage with a focus on horticulture and fashion value chain. This is achieved through the facilitation and development of supportive business ecosystem and by improving the competitiveness and strengthening their market linkages with the key sector. The target of the project is to train and provide support to 500 women-owned businesses by the end of the third year. To date, a total of 315 women entrepreneurs or farmers have been trained by the project, and the project has provided in-depth support to 92 of these businesses. Ladies and gentlemen, empowering women through trade can be an effective driver for economic inclusion for women and has the potential to reduce poverty. Enabling women to participate in trade and improving the performance always leads in the improved performance of the micro, small, and medium-sized enterprises, and those translate to economic empowerment particularly to this segment of the society. In the MSME mapping study of 2018, it was noted that the sector employed the largest share of the active labor force, about 60%, but contribute less than 20% of the GDP. In addition, 98% of the sector is comprised of the micro enterprises, 77% of which are unregistered. And the majority of these are led by women. The challenges identified for this sector include, among others, access to finance, access to markets, access to information, and multiplicity of taxes, just to name a few. It is therefore important to promote the policy, a policy environment in which these micro-enterprises comprising mainly of women can be formalized and 
become sustainable enterprises. It is for this reason that the government of the Gambia, with the support of ITC, is developing a gender responsive procurement policy to allow women to fully participate in the public procurement. Given the magnitude of the spending on goods and services through public procurement, it is an extremely useful policy tool for growth and socioeconomic transformation. We believe that through procurement, especially within the public sector, we can achieve great socioeconomic change for women simply by implementing more inclusion. In fact, most projects, 60 to 70 percent of the transaction costs for the projects include elements of procurement. It is that is the reason we are involved in the Women in Business Advocacy Group, an advocacy group that supports the inclusion and empowerment of women in the Gambia. Through this initiative, Sea Trades is supporting the Gambian Women Chamber of Commerce on a communication campaign as well as the development of a gender list of women entrepreneurs. Through the advocacy efforts of the group, these women are able to secure large government procurement deals with a total value of more than $3 million during the first procurement of the Gambia government intervention for the COVID-19 relief, food relief, which was held in June 2020. Ladies and gentlemen, the year 2020 was a challenging one, both for sea trades and for all the economic participants, and as well as the beneficiaries of the project, uh, of the intervention. About 92% of our supported entrepreneurs saw reduction in their revenues, and the women farmers face additional barriers, including breakdown virtually of the market opportunities in the rural areas as a result of the lockdown on the Lumos. The virtual uh, and the market restrictions resulting therefrom. The project mediated these impacts by connecting women guardians with onion buyers, thereby creating new income stream during these difficult times. Despite these challenges, 25% of the supported companies reported a higher number of employees in June than when they first started the project. In facilitating access to finance, the Sheet Trade Mini Grant Scheme have awarded more than $80,000 what about four million to various women entrepreneurs. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm very passionate about women empowerment and I would like to assure you of my ministry's commitment that women empowerment is mainstream in our various policies and strategies. It is worth noting that a college I joined was principally a college for women only. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, I feel at home when this, uh, this statement is made here, and I identify with it strongly. We are, very uh, we are very familiar with the varied and interconnected challenges women face when they participate in trade, and we do understand these challenges as entrenched viewpoints require open communication and dialogue and the need for change. It is through these forums such as this that we have the chance to spark collaboration and lasting change. Such enge engagements allow men, all stakeholders to discuss the context in which affirmative actions may be recommended to address the issues of lack of or lack or limited opportunities for women entrepreneurs. I am convinced that unlocking the entrepreneurial potential of our women would go a long way in alleviating poverty as women are the hardest seed by this phenomenon. We understand that women are empowered. When women are empowered, they are building the fundamentals for a more stable, coherent, and balanced society. Addressing the issues of nutrition, healthcare, poverty, and education, among others. And it is supported by evidence and research everywhere else. Women have better resilience in terms of stress like COVID, and they have better leaders than men even though men don't acknowledge it. <laughs> and as they say, when she trades, it is the entire nation that benefits. With that, I thank you all.
And yeah. Thank, you. Thank you so much, Honorable Minister. We are glad to know that you're so much uh, passionate about women empowerment and you're very much uh, concerned about their involvement in all the programs that you do. And uh, luckily the permanent secretary from the Ministry of Women and Children uh, or gender, women, <laughs> gender and children and social welfare is here. And I always ask her this question, how are you making sure that gender is mainstreamed uh, in all the programs that the government is implementing? Because uh, as the ministry responsible for gender, we want to make sure that they really, uh, you know, cons concern about that and making sure that that is happening across all levels. And she always tell me that they're doing so much about that. And I'm glad to hear the honorable minister mention that they are aware of this and they're making sure that Agenda is mainstreamed in all their programs. So thank you so much, Honorable Minister, once again. And at this juncture, I think it's just about, uh, uh, you know, it's the right time that we invite the permanent secretary, uh, Madam Rohibite Dabo. Uh, she is going to speak or deliver her statement on behalf of the Honorable Minister, Madam Fatou Kinte. A round of applause for her, please. I'm always happy to share platforms with us because she's so passionate, you know. I, I hope this morning is not so dull. Give me that energy once again. Thank you. <laughs> My beautiful chairperson, um, the Honorable Minister of um, Foreign Affairs representing Her Excellency the Vice President, the Honorable Minister of Trade, senior government officials here present, members of the Diplomatic and Consular Corps, business leaders and private sector representatives, the media fraternity, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, all other protocols respectfully observed. Assalamu alaikum, good morning to you all. It is indeed a great pleasure for me to be here today on behalf of the Honorable Minister of Gender, Children and Social Welfare, Honorable Fatou Kinte, who would have loved to be here, but could not due to unforeseen circumstances beyond her control. As the PS, I am really honored to be part of this worthy forum of the fourth edition of Women Leadership Forum organized by Bridging Guards Advisory in partnership with She Trades with the theme, Women Entrepreneurs in the New Normal. This forum is very timely since International Women's Day, March 8th, is just around the corner a day to recognize the progress made in ensuring gender equality and access to opportunities for women in business. Women entrepreneurs play a critical role in economic growth and development of countries worldwide, and the Gambia is not an exception. Entrepreneurship contributes significantly to poverty reduction, generate revenue, employment, creation, and, and promotes domestic investment. As women, we find it difficult to find quality paid jobs. This leads us to look to other sources of income, notably self-employment. It is a fact that most women operate their own businesses, but they tend to be in the informal sector and perhaps the most disadvantaged, such as agriculture, gardening, even those in the specialized services, mostly concentrate on limited number of activities, such as tailoring, food, catering process, beauty salons, while our male counterparts have the bigger businesses. Therefore, we must work together to address the gender inequalities and inabilities. In the Gambia as elsewhere, COVID-19 has disproportionately affected women entrepreneurs. But again, the pandemic pose is giving the world the opportunity to reflect and recalibrate on such causes as diversity and the environment, women are starting three quarters of new businesses according to the global indicators. The pandemic has reinforced existing gender inequalities at home and at work. As a country that re relies on the tourism sector for 20% of our GDP, COVID-19 has hit hard on our economy and even harder on our women entrepreneurs. However, the lockdowns and the extended work from home routine have seen women exploring, indulging in various activities from craft work to learning new skills and even starting new businesses. 
distinguished ladies and gentlemen. With the new normal, there are newer market challenges to address, and several women are using their free time to design new businesses, new business approaches and solutions, and finding time to engage themselves in several online trainings to sharpen and acquire new skills. Empowered by digital platforms, this include launching online marketplaces for products that have become rare in the market. It is important to note that the full potential of any society can be realized if the ideas and energy of the entire population are unleashed. Therefore, when women are empowered, both economically and socially, their community as a whole benefit. Expanding economic opportunities for women not only contributes to economic development, but it also ensures the safety and prosperity of society. As many of us have experienced, the climb to the top is often fraught with obstacles for women. I have found that many people in our society think of successful women as cold in business, whilst also expecting them to be warm and nurturing in the home. If that is the case, is it any wonder that women face challenges as they work to reach the top? As a country, we are gradually improving on women's role at all levels. And as women, we continue to play, play an integral part in inspiring change for what we stand for and believe in. We cannot. We cannot rest while women and women-headed households are still the face of poverty in this country. The She Trade Initiative provides our women entrepreneurs and, and women-owned SMEs with a network to connect to the markets. One of the main challenges women in this country encounter in running their small businesses is access to finance. With support from ITC Sea Trade, networks of women entrepreneurs ensure that women entrepreneurs are aware of upcoming tenders, training, and investment. The Gambia Public Procurement Authority and women's networks, such as the Gambia Women's Chamber of Commerce, are providing targeted trainings for women entrepreneurs on procurement procedures, requirements, and payment systems. Ladies and gentlemen, the commitment of the government of the Gambia under the leadership, leadership of His Excellency the President Adam Abaro to promote gender equality and women empowerment has been clearly demonstrated in the NDP as one of the crit critical poverty alleviation strategies for the economic development of this country. Thus, the ident identification of the WEF, the Women Enterprise Fund, as a flagship project with the objective to strengthen the capacity of women in small and medium enterprises and to increase lives and livelihoods. The Women Enterprise Fund is to provide financial support of women entrepreneurs to enhance their potential to succeed in their professional and private lives. Recently, the government of the Gambia approved $10 million as part of their contribution towards the Women Enterprise Fund, which is being coordinated and implemented by the Ministry of Gender, Children, and Social Welfare. Towards the end of last year, 46 women groups or CAFOs benefited from the first disbursement and they have undergone basic entrepreneurship training in all the regions. Recently, an additional 51 groups were approved to benefit from the fund. In a similar vein, the government of the Gambia has implemented several policies, programs, and projects to promote women entrepreneurs with support from development partners and other international organizations. For instance, the startup incubator, Emprotec, American Chamber of Commerce, are all bodies that aim at supporting women entrepreneurs in this country. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, as mentioned earlier, most of the women entrepreneurs in the Gambia concentrate on businesses targeting the tourists and selling both locally and inter internationally. But with the high tax and too much border controls, some find it very difficult to sell to the neighboring countries like Senegal, Mauritania, and, the, and Guinea. Vision 2030 states that the Gambia would be an enabling entrepreneurship environment, quality entrepreneurship education, and thriving entrepreneurship spirit, embracing all parts of the country. We believe that the vision is achievable if women are placed in the driving seat of our economy. Women, especially Gambian women, have shown their resilience and patience in the past year and are investing in causes and concerns that matters to them not just to make money. Women are focused on the promotion of health, the environment, 
sustainability, gender equality, and other forms of social justice. Women want to act and do something about today's issues. Starting a new business and improving the existing ones are powerful ways to accomplish that. However, in all of this, we need to keep in mind the multiple barriers faced by women entrepreneurs, especially those operating in the informal economy, ranging from lower literacy rates and digital skills to increasing vulnerability to, se to sexual harassment and abuse. In these trying times now, more than ever, it is time for women to be unapologetic, embrace boldness, integrity, self-confidence, compassion, intuition, and creativity. The decision to take the risk of doing a business, such as expanding our businesses, hiring more employees, etc., help us move forward. It is crucial that we continue to take challenges and put um, ourselves forward, even where we may not seek every box, we should continue to challenge the stereotype that we are less capable leaders and entrepreneurs and create an enabling environment for women to reach the top. As a ministry, we want to witness a world in which women not only flourish in business, but also in politics and leadership, and we'll do everything possible in our capacity to remove barriers to women entrepreneurship. As women, we need to share a clear common goal and a strong sense of collective endeavors and articulate these goals loud, clear, and regularly. Therefore, it is important for women in the SMSEs to transform from self-employment towards prosperous entrepreneurship to scale up and be engaged in high revenue activities. As the ministry responsible for women, we will continue to work with you through concerted policies and programs to make significant progress in achieving gender equality and women empowerment. As a country, and for that matter, women of this country, we call the Gambia, we will together end all forms of abuse and violence against women and girls. Gender-based violence does not only cause pain and suffering, but also undermines our productivity and diminishes our competitiveness. On this note, I want to reaffirm our commitment as a ministry to work for and with all women in this country to achieve gender equality and women empowerment the soonest possible with the help of the Almighty. We must work together to be empowered and expand opportunities in politics, business, and beyond. We must unite to end any harmful practice or violence and discrimination against women and girls, and we must invest in gender equality to yield great returns across society. And to gain equality for women, all women need to be equal. On this note, I want to thank you all for your kind attention and then wish you all the best in your endeavors. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, uh, P.S. She never disappoints. Thank you so much for renewing your commitment. And I'm happy that the Women Enterprise Fund has really, uh, is really on a strong footing, as we see in the reports. And we'll definitely keep, uh, keep uh, you know, monitoring that and see where it leads to as well. And I'm very much happy about the things that she has mentioned, especially for the fact that, you know, most of the issues or ills that women face on a daily basis are kind of like intellect. And if we build on women's socioeconomic status, we are, we are creating more safety for them. And we are also, uh, as she mentioned, improving the prosperity of society. So it's important that we invest in this. In this. And the theme for this uh, event today is She Trades and Women Entrepreneurs in the New Normal. So I'm pretty sure we'll hear a lot around this and innovative ways that we can go about doing that. And at this point, before we get to the keynote address, I would just like to uh, call on a poet, if she's around, uh, Miss Safia Tujuf, to give us some poetry before we head on to other speeches. Is Safia to here? A round of applause for her, please. Morning, everybody. It takes me like a heavy heart to stand in front of you all to deliver a message 
that I believe we all agreed to learn something from it. It's not other person than a woman that today so many people in our society are looking at us in another way around. We are saying not to that and the poets read. She has risen from her own seat. Smile to show out her euphemism teeth. Then my heart beats. Wisdom she speaks. From the depth of the ocean, my voice was ordered to sing. From the signal of the satellite, I walk on my feet without the fear of the jeans. For so many days, I have been mistreated, isolated, and neglected. I always knew that God didn't deceive me. Man deprived me from my physical rights. They knew I was this rose flower with the strongest scent. And their package of pleasure is stored in me. But maybe the bounds of our breast make them blind. Maybe the coolness of our eyes make them lust. Maybe the cuffs of our bodies that rise some people think that we are weak. Remember, I am the woman. I am the human heart with knowledge, intelligence, and elegance. I signify, represent, and glorify the beauty of nature. But out of their selfishness, greediness, and subjective opinion, some underrated and belittled the gift that was impacted in my mind. Little did they know that I was the tool and the silver spoon to be used for their civilization and development. They forgot that I have the power to make them reign. I have the power to make them change. Back in history, during the Arabs era, I was a shame, a disgrace, an abomination and disastrous to every family. In the Indian era, my last friend stopped and the day my husband died, the Roman concluded that I was the most useless and the most reckless being. They paraded me as a prostitute and only thought that I was perfect to be a housewife. The black African never gave me the courage for my voice to be heard and the best school I was allowed to attend was the kitchen. In my wall of voice, Jigain, Baham, Sei, Wang, Topoton, Jabot, Nenko, Hami. Lately, they have realized that I am the center of decision making and the engine to move this world. I am the firmest, the chiefest among all the lovers of God. A veritable sign and sun in splendor from whose light proceeds the rays of all kinds of light. I am like a running water of truth like the surely sea. I am the clearest, the most manifest being. I am the one whose love raises man to the heaven, making it shine in purity and virtue. I am the consecrate of man in all his sorrows and gifts, and man will never be complete without me. Power to women. Glory comes from Daring to begin, buried in my 50-50 war. I am striving to be successful, respected, and valued, known to be above man or equal in strength. Standing firm on our key positions, we manage high positions that the men fail to advance on. Everywhere in the world, trustworthy, effective leadership, branded our names, no wonder we gave back to every successful man. Power to women. Well done, great women who had fulfilled their mission with love and high endeavor. Everywhere we will rejoice and justice will be spreading. And justice will be spreading. Thank you all for your kind attention. Thank you so much, uh, Safia, too. A round of applause for her once again, please. Thank you.
and uh, I hope we are now ready to uh, hear the keynote statement. Like I said in the beginning, unfortunately, the Vice President is not here with us, but she's been ably represented by the Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr. Mamadou Tangara, and I'd like you all, please, to join me, welcome him, as he delivers the keynote statement. Thank you very much, MC. I would like to read this statement on behalf of Her Excellency, the Vice President, who is unavoidably absent, but you all know how passionate she is when it comes to gender issues. She would have loved to be here. Unfortunately, due to circumstances, circumstances beyond her control, she is not present. And the statement reads, Honorable Minister of Trade, industry, regional integration and employment, the Permanent Secretary, Minister of Gender, Children and Social Welfare, His Excellency the High Commissioner of the United Kingdom to the Gambia, representative of ITC in the Gambia, gender champions here present, representatives of the media, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. May I take this opportunity to express my sincere appreciation to the sea trades in the Gambia project under the Ministry of Trade, Industry, Regional Integration and Employment, and bridging gaps for once again organizing the Women Leadership Forum. The government of the Gambia, under the able leadership of His Excellency President Adam Abaro, continues to implement programs to empower Gambian women and girls towards the attainment of SDG 5, achieve gender equality and empower all women and girls. It is said that economic empowerment of women is one of the world's most promising areas of investment and demographic dividends to be tapped as evidence shows that giving women the same opportunities as men improves a country's competitiveness and productivity. Women's economic empowerment is therefore very central to the Gambia's development agenda. And this is demonstrated in the National Development Plan, which highlights the need to empower Gambian women to realize their full potential as among the critical enablers of the NDP. The government's collaboration with International Trade Center to establish a sea trade chapter in the Gambia is therefore aligned to this objective of, of empowering women to benefit more from economic participation. Under the project, the Ministry of Trade, Industry, Regional Integration and Employment and ITC are strengthening the capacities of women in the horticulture and textile and apparel value chains to improve their overall business management skills, product qualities, packaging and marketing of their products. We are aware of the challenges that businesses are facing due to the negative impact of the COVID-19 pandemic, particularly on women businesses and their access to export markets. A recent survey of women entrepreneurs in the Gambia found that 92% of previously well-performing entrepreneurs saw a reduction in their revenues due to COVID-19 and had to lay off staff as a consequence. Many are suffering not only from reduced demand from consumers and buyers, they also face supply shortages of inputs and are struggling even more than before to access finance. The government is therefore working with partners to implement innovative ways to effectively leverage and uplift the socioeconomic status of women amid and post COVID-19. And then I'm therefore glad that this year's Women Leadership Forum is designed to showcase the works that are currently being implemented to address issues of business continuity in the new normal. 
this year's theme for the forum, Sea Trades and Women Entrepreneurs in the New Normal, demonstrates the efforts of the government and ITC to build the capacities of women businesses to not only be resilient in this new normal, but also to create opportunities for their businesses to trade more, reclaim and sustain jobs in the economy. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, I want to reiterate my continued support to the Sea Trades work as a gender champion in the program, and I will continue to push for the empowerment of women and women-owned businesses through trade for enhanced economic inclusion and through the Gender Champion Initiative to induce behavioral change for more inclusion of women in leadership roles. As part of these roles as a gender champion and the need to support women entrepreneurs in the new normal, my office is supporting various government institutions to create the policy environment to promote gender inclusiveness in trade and other development programs to reduce the gap gender and maximize the benefits from development programs. I hosted an e-breakfast meeting with partners and stakeholders last year to brainstorm and reflect on what needs to be done to continue to push the push for more gender sensitive policies to support the Gambia development process, including women access to procurement. We are making progress in the area of women access to public procurement and a lot of advocacy works as well as policy dialogues have been organized under the Sea Trades Project and the Women Business Advocacy Group. Through these efforts, the gender responsive public procurement policy was validated on the 22nd February 2021 to provide for the first time a policy framework to promote women access to public pro procurement. This is an important step towards reducing the gender imbalance access to public procurement. As you know, governments globally spend around 9 trillion US dollars on public procurement every year. This can account for approximately 10 to 15 percent of GDP in developed countries and up to 40 percent of GDP in developing countries. Government has been a major buyer before the pandemic and this is increasing in most places as economies are contracting. But globally, women account for only one percent of successful tenders. We need to work and change this narrative. We need to address the policy environment that governs public procurement processes and reduce barriers that limit women access to public procurement. We also need to ensure business support organizations are up to the job of supporting women entrepreneurs. And we need to build the capacities of women entrepreneurs and create opportunities for them to compete. We also need to create more transparency about these opportunities and actively encourage women vendors to bid. Government is creating opportunities and encouraging women entrepreneurs participation. This was demonstrated in the government's procurement for food aid in response to the COVID-19 pandemic last year. In these interventions, about 47% of tenders for food products in the context of the government's response to COVID-19 pandemic were awarded to women entrepreneurs. Chairperson, ladies and gentlemen, in conclusion, let me emphasize that skills and training as well as developing the production capacities of women and women businesses are instrumental in promoting economic diversification and inclusion in trade. This will enable women and women entrepreneurs to engage in more trade in the domestic market, and this will serve as a springboard for them to participate in regional and international markets. This is important, given that fully engaged, skilled, healthy, and productive women and women businesses will help in making the Gambian economy better as they can help break the cycle of poverty 
and strengthen their families and communities. On that note, I wish you all every success in your deliberation and thank you for your kind attention. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Honorable Minister. Uh, thank you for ably representing the Vice President. And I think you're still in a very great position to deliver this statement. Since we're talking about women entrepreneurs, uh, women in business, we don't only want to limit them to the Gambian market, but also that they can have access to the international market. And we hope we can rely on your office to facilitate that as well, of course, uh, with uh, the Ministry of Trade uh, there in that, in that dimension. A round of applause for him once again, and many thanks. Thank you so much. And at this juncture, of course, like I said in the beginning, we had uh, gender champions in the previous edition. And uh, now we just want to hear from them some of the commitments that they've taken uh, when uh, that unveiling was done and how far they've come in uh, implementing those commitments. But before then, I'd just like to uh, release members of the high table. Of course, many thanks to His Excellency, uh, David Belgroff, the British High Commissioner uh, to the Gambia. Round of applause for him. And right after him is the Minister of Trade, Honorable C. Decatur, thank you so much. Uh, special thanks also goes to Saini Sise. She is the founder of Safe Heaven. Of course, she'll be part of this first panel. And right after her, there is the Honorable Minister himself, Dr. Mamadou Tangara, Minister of Foreign Affairs. And lastly, the Permanent Secretary at the Ministry of Gender, Children, and Social Welfare. Take note of that. It's no longer Ministry of Women, but Ministry of Gender, Children, and Social Welfare. A round of applause for our special guest one more time. Yes, thank you, and you may uh, join the, uh, the the audience now. As but I would like these people to stay. Uh, the as we begin the reflections from gender champions and beneficiaries. The vice president is not here, but we have uh, the honorable minister, Dr. Mamadou Tangara. Uh, he was also a gender champion, right, revealed last edition. And we are going to have Madam Sene Sise still seated there. Uh, she is the founder of Save Heaven Foundation. And we're supposed to have a gender champion mentee join this uh, very session. Is the gender champion mentee here? I've not been given her name though, but I believe she's supposed to join us on this panel as well. All right, I don't know where Fatulet is, but we'll, we'll have to uh, fix that in as well. So we have them seated already, and I'll just take my seat. And it, it is going to be about uh, 20 minutes or so. Let me get my mask on. Uh, where they will just tell us what they've done. Hello? Oh, wow. <laughs> my voice is scary. Don't mind me. Oh, my. All right. I'm glad that this is loud and clear. And as it is, we have two of them. Uh, yes, Fatu, do we have the gender champion mentee? She's not around. So we have only two of them in this panel. All right. Uh, so that means it's going to be even quicker. quicker. Right. And we have the Honorable Minister, Dr. Mamadou Tangara, and as well, the founder of Save Heaven Foundation, uh, Sadie Sise. Before I come to the Honorable Minister, Sadie, just briefly tell us about your foundation and what you do at the Safe Haven. You can put on your mic now, yes.
So, um, yeah, in a nutshell, we raise awareness of infertility and fight the stigma that's associated with it. Thank you so much, uh, Saini, for taking us through that. I think this is very important. It's something that I rarely see. So, a uh, great initiative that your organization is doing there. Let me refresh the room a little bit, right? While we're having this conversation, I would say in the beginning that in 2019, gender champions were re revealed. And the objective of the Gambia Gender Champions Initiative is to promote gender equality in the Gambia by establishing and amplifying the commitment of those in leadership roles to actively foster gender equality within their mandates and to increase the visibility of women in senior positions. When you look at the composition of these gender champions in the last edition, you realize that most of the women there as well are holding very key positions in the country. The vice president is one of those as well. In fact, she was supposed to be a part of this panel, but she's unable to be here due to unforeseen circumstances. So we're very much aware of, uh, you know, what this signals in our empowerment endeavor. And if we are having women at these positions, you know, and especially the fact that we have a vice president who is at the top of all other positions in this country, you know, being handled by a woman. It would have been great to have her here to share her insight. But still, we have the Honorable Minister, who was also a gender champion in 2019. Uh, when we talk about gender, we're not only talking about women, we're talking about men and women. And he's uh, also part of those gender champions. So, Honorable Minister, let me kick off with you. Uh, tell us briefly, what were some of the commitments uh, that you made in the last edition, and, and how far have you gone in fulfilling those commitments? Thank you very much, uh, Fatou. Uh, some of my commitment was to ensure that we have gender parity within the administration. And I think we were fortunate at the level of the Minister of Foreign Affairs to be able to achieve it, because I used to have uh, two permanent secretaries, one male, one female. And uh, at the level of the senior management also, we have four directors, DPS, female. So I think we've been very careful when it comes to that. I think we need to make, put more efforts in having more female ambassadors. And we've realized that some of <laughs> our best ambassadors are actually our female ambassadors. Okay. And they've proven, their, tra their track record has proven that. And I think this also brings us back to uh, the issue of gender-based uh, violence. Uh -huh. I think this, we live in a society where we, the culture of silence is also killing us. When people are victims, they think that, I mean, you are the victim, but you end up thinking that you are guilty of doing something wrong. Because the society will not listen to you and they will start stigmatizing you rather than listening to you. And, it. and the very sad thing is that happen usually within the family circle and people that are supposed to be uh, respectable people. And I think we have to break that culture of silence and allow people to speak out loud and make their voice heard. I think that's very important. And I'm not putting this pin by a mere coincidence. This was given to me by the executive director of UN Women, Women, and I'm from Zile. Uh, as when she appointed appointed me as he for she ambassador. Yeah, yeah. Mr. Kajali will be happy about that. He's a he for she too. That was uh, also the culmination of all the work that we were doing at the level of the UN during CSW and supporting also one of our own, that's Daha Dukure, who was even nominated for the Nobel. Peace Prize for her fight against FGM. And I think it's important when we have such people, we showcase them. Because outside they are well respected, but when they come back here, we tend to overlook them. And I think we can use them as voice to real call the voice of the voiceless. I think that's very important. And I was also keenly listening. That here, you know, today I was very disciplined. I read the statement of our Excellency, the <laughs> Vice President, without adding anything. <laughs> but now allow me to just make some comments. Uh, I was listening keenly to the poet, by the way, uh, the lady, excellent poetry. Yeah, uh, yeah, Safia too. I should not forget that. My, the name of my wife is Safia. So. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. And. You know, the minister was also referring to the fact that women, when you put them in positions, they are 
performing far better. And there he saluted also their resilience. There is a French demographer called Jacques Valen. I'm also a demographer by training who said that, oh, commencement, Dieu a créé la femme supérieure à l'homme. In the beginning, God created the woman superior to men. Because they've noticed that during period of famine, hunger, starvation, men are the first to die. So the woman has more resistance. In the beginning, they will say, you know, women are not going to war, they are not smoking cigarettes, but now we've seen they're doing every, all that, but still they live longer than men. And then we are not giving birth, huh? they are doing that, and still they are living long, longer. And I think in the context of Afri African society, for me, when we talk about women liberation, it's a false debate. Because in Africa, women used to occupy the private place in our society. If you go to the Congos, you have, if you have not have heard of Queen Anzinga, near, closer to home in Cordoba, you have Queen Abrapoku. Well, in the Caribbean, you have Queen Nani. These are women who led liberation struggle, and men were following them. Closer to home, you have also in the history of Kabu, Fenda Sane, who led the collective suicide of the women when they refused to be dominated by others. Mm -hmm. And you have in Nigeria the mother of the famous singer Fela Nicola Kokutu, Funmilayo Ramson Kuti, who was a very vibrant and progressive woman who fought for the rights of women. So it's religion and some of our male dominated cultures that has decided to relegate the women in like a second uh, category citizen in our society. But in Africa, women used to occupy a pride of place in politics, and you know that you, the Yoruba women has a lot of economic independence freedom, they will go and do business. So these are things that we need. Let's not only follow others, listen to them, but let's revisit our own culture and try to know more about our, ourselves and take what is good, huh? create some kind of thing we call it symbiosis take what is good, and then leave the bad things in our culture. But because not everything is good in our culture. So thank you. <laughs> thank you so much. I'll come back to you in a sec. But let me just shift to Saini here. Saini was also a gender champion. Oh, the mic keeps going and coming. Uh, you were also a gender champion in the last edition. It's gone again, don't worry. Uh, tell us uh, the same question. Uh, what was the commitment you made, and how far you've gone? Um, first of all, I would first like to thank the ITC, the Ministry of, Ministry of Trade, and um, the Chi Trade for uh, selecting me as a gender champion in 2019, alongside great women of substance like Auntie Nafibai and Auntie Fatu, etc. Um, we committed to raise a lot of awareness on infertility, the causes of infertility, the, um, the possible treatment and also fight the stigma that is associated with it. Um, fortunately, we were able to secure some funding um, from the University of Sheffield, and we were also able to get the um, attention of two renowned professors at the University of Sheffield, um, and some students at the University of Sheffield to come down um, last year to Gambia, and we organized a fertility awareness week. But unfortunately, Uncle Corona came. <laughs> yeah. As whether well, Corona did yeah. hamper on the activities, actually. Um, <laughs> you said Corona is an uncle. Yeah. It's not an aunt. <laughs> it's a he, yeah? Yes, it is. We agree. Yeah, like, we also go to the place from the 28th of March. It was going to consist of a fertility conference where we would invite the gynecologist. present um, issues on infertility. We were also going to have a fertility awareness week. We would have been on the TVs, on the radios, and we, we, would, we would have also been to rural Gambia. It was not only here mm -hmm. in urban Gambia. So unfortunately, like I said, Uncle Corona came and we went on lockdown, and that didn't happen. Tickets were booked, hotels were booked for people to come down. But yeah, so we had to move it to um, November last year. But still, we couldn't um, implement the project. So, notwithstanding, it is not cancelled, um, we're still waiting for the coronavirus to 
yeah, to go down, oh. and then, yeah, and then we have it. Mm -hmm. um, notwithstanding that, um, I was also able to join lots of um, TV programs, radio shows, and mm -hmm. and virtual seminars regarding infertility, just to raise awareness on infertility. Because, like I said in my opening, um, we live in a society where infertility is um, a taboo. People don't talk about it. And as a foundation, we want to live in a gambit where um, both men and women can freely talk about infertility without fearing of being stigmatized. Mm -hmm. So that's what we are fighting on, and we're very passionate about what we do. And we will continue the fight till the very end. <laughs> yeah. And, and how, how has the response been from the engagements that you've had already? Yeah, um, when we started as a foundation, um, people were not really coming up. Because like I said, it's a taboo. People don't talk about it. Well, but alhamdulillah, people are now um, joining the conversation. Yeah, People are now coming up with issues that they're dealing with in private, especially women. And we have, we even have men that um, come to us and talk to us about what they are dealing with. Yeah, and also I want to emphasize on the stigma. Um, a lot of women are dying in silence when it comes to infertility. Um, they are always marginalized. They are called names, and they are made to feel that they are not enough. Yeah, they are not enough of a woman when it comes to them not um, being able to conceive. So um, it is really heartbreaking to have women calling you, um, crying, or coming to you, telling you that they don't even have the um, the zeal to to start a business and survive just because of the depression they are going through. So, uh, yeah, we are trying to find all that. Mm -hmm. Very well. And today in the morning, while I was driving, coming here, I had, um, over the radio, some of the partnerships that you're doing with the Endometriosis Initiative. And I think it's very good to, uh, to, to have all these partnerships in this, in this endeavor. I'll just put a post to that and see to uh, the, uh, the, the minister, honorable minister. Say anything mentioned how COVID-19, the, the uncle she, she named it, <laughs> affected some of their activities. Did it in any way affect your activities in this, in this same endeavor? Especially in some of the payments that you had made. Well, uh, of, of course, it's affected our, our work as diplomats. You know, most of the things that we discuss are done behind closed doors, and there you need physical presence. And that exposure today is not uh, available to some of the directors who would have attended conferences, have bilateral side meetings, and that's where the most important issues are discussed. What you are seeing in public, these are just for the public consumption, but most of our work, if you know the intricacies of diplomacy, is done in the corridors and behind closed doors, so obviously it's affected. Okay, and uh, before I let you people go, as this is supposed to be very short, you mentioned how important it is to, uh, you know, collaborate with our champions who internationally are very much respected, but when they come here, it's a different case. Have you been doing effort uh, in that dimension of, you know, uh, reaching out to more people, especially, you know, our other gender champions as well, who are doing pretty much very well across the country to see how we can also tap into their potentials for the better good. Well, I, I think whenever I see opportunities, not only within the country, but even outside, we do our best to support uh, our women leaders. And there is a very important network, and I've invited some of our leaders here to join it. That's the African Women Leaders Network, based in New York. The coordinator is a very good friend of mine. And some of them were invited, and they participated in meetings in New York. But let me also make a quick comment on the issue of infertility. Yes, because usually in our society, only the women are blamed. So I think you need to to more sensitization, yeah. because sometimes the man can be the cause, mm -hmm. but usually the women are the ones that are being blamed, stigmatized. Mm -hmm. So a lot of things, I think, when we do the necessary sensitization, people will understand. Mm -hmm. You know, the first time I had the courage to stand up to my father, uh, Rahi knows my father, if there was one person that I was really scared of, that was my father. <laughs> And she used to like to go with me because you see my father shouting at me, but I would not say the word. You know, uh, when the issue of FGM came up, yeah. 
when he asked me to uh, do the rights for my girls, I told him, these are my girls, not your girls. He insisted, I said, no. And if you have to do it, you have to do it over my dead body. Yeah. And, and if by any chance you do it and put me in front of a fair accompli, you will never see me again. And that is because I attended a course in gender and violence at the MDI. And I saw this little girl, the age of my daughter, being circumcised in one day, putting tribal scarification on her the same day, and she fainted. I could not stand it. I left the room and I was sweating. It was our Gambian winter. But I, and people were telling me, you should stay. You have to be courageous. I said, I don't need to be courageous to look at this. But that day, I went out with the firm decision that this would never happen to my girls. So I think people need to be, we need to be sensitized. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. And, and, and there are people who were not really... Hit. All the education that they're getting, but it's at least, uh, you know, relieving to know that the sensitization is yielding dividends. But just to wrap it up, uh, starting with you, Sally, just tell us, uh, what, what do we expect from you next? I'm pretty sure that, uh, you know, the gender champion, Okay, this mic keeps going and coming. I'm pretty sure that since you've been, you know, decorated as a gender champion, <laughs> safe to say, that it has, in, in a certain way, uplifted your spirit. Uh, what can we expect more from you? Thank you, Fatu. Um, being a gender champion has opened a lot of doors and opportunities for me as a person and my organization as a whole. Mm -hmm. um, currently, we are in negotiations with um, QTV to have a fertility awareness show. It's going to be called the, um, the fertility conversation. It has never happened in the history of the Gambia. So um, we want everyone to be um, educated and informed when it comes to infertility and the stigma that's associated with it and anything that's infertility. Mm -hmm. So we will be inviting um, lots of people, like medical practitioners, like um, the Havali, like the Kanyanai, um people, like we men and women struggling with infertility. Anyone that has to deal with infertility will, um, will be invited. Working um, um, on a, like a documentary in di different languages to fight the stigma that's associated with infertility. There is also a project on the pipeline with waiting for funding um, to have a, um, a TV series that has an, um, a, comp a component of infertility in it. Nice. So we have lots of lots of projects on the pipeline, mm -hmm. and I am also appealing to the great women of substance that are in high offices. Um, whenever we have um, like an event, and send them letters to to come and um, support us to please come out because um, we don't we might need them financially, but the moral support is mm -hmm. really important. Like seeing them in our events motivates us a lot. So that's why we always endeavor to to send letters to them and have them come to our program. Mm -hmm. and, and to close, um, the Let's Fight and the organization and the Safe Heaven Foundation, um, including other partners, are uh, um, organizing an, an awareness march on endometriosis. Um, endometriosis is one of the leading causes of infertility. So we're having a march pass on Saturday. I will take this opportunity to invite every one of you if you can come out and support us, we will be starting at 8 o'clock in the morning mm -hmm. uh, from traffic lights to Westfield Monument just to raise awareness on, on endometriosis because it's affecting a lot of girls and it will affect you as a, as a woman when you grow up if you didn't know that um, yes, you, have, you have it. Because what it basically does is um, you have um, very painful and sharp um, menstrual pains when you're, when you're seeing your period and um, the flow is also a lot. Mm -hmm. So. We think that that is normal in our society. As a young girl growing up, mm -hmm. when you deal with that, you think it's normal. Mm -hmm. Most of the time, it's not normal. And it blocks your Colopian tube if you don't know it as a woman. And if you grow up, if your Colopian tubes are blocked, you might not be able to have a child. Mm -hmm. So knowing it early mm -hmm. um, would save you a lot from experiencing Very well. Thank you so much, Amy. A round of applause so much. Great to know that we are looking forward to more conversations around this as well. Uh, to wrap it up with the Honourable Minister, uh, we, were, we were talking about, of course, women, uh, women entrepreneurs. We are talking about business. Give us your assurance 
what more can we expect from your ministry, especially in improving uh, the access to markets uh, as well? I'm sure this is not your doing alone, but what can we expect from your hands? Well, we are open and available whenever we see opportunities or the women entrepreneurs see opportunities when they knock our doors, we'll definitely give them the necessary support. Because I think the fact of being chosen as a gender champion is to be able to live up to expectation. Mm -hmm. And that cannot be done without interacting and supporting those who committed to support. So we commit ourselves to translate into country, concrete action our uh, commitment to work with the women entrepreneurs. So wherever they see opportunity, let them come, and I think we will give them necessary support. Right, another commitment that so, I want to... <laughs> yeah. So, uh, uh -huh. the, the, uh, when it comes to business, they know far better than me the, the domain. So they have more information than my humble self uh, have, so they can come to the ministry and we'll give them all the support. Right, uh, they are here already. We have anti-idle <laughs> idea. Uh, so well, um, uh, Auntie, Madam Sidibe here, but uh, thank you so much, Honorable Minister and Saini. A round of applause for them once again. Uh, Saini, I'm sure, you see, we have the strong institutions here, so they've heard what you said. Now, I'm sure Auntie Fatou knows Save Heaven, and the next time you knock on their door, something can be done about that. Raymond, yes, by saying hi. But thank you so much, uh, Honorable and Saini. A round of applause for them. And uh, at this juncture... We'll just uh, like to say that we've come to the end of this first session where we keep track, we were keeping track of our gender champions and how far they've come in fulfilling their commitments. Of course, I made them take other commitments again. I'm pretty sure next when we come here, or when I have an interview with the Honorable Minister, I will ask him what he has done in that regard. <laughs> but now, uh, thank you so much. You may take your seat. Right. And at this juncture, we'll have the award of certificate. Yes, a happy one there. <laughs> it was great. <laughs> yes, at this juncture, uh, we'll have the award of certificates to former gender champions. I'm pretty sure most of them are here already. And uh, to do us the honor would be the Honorable Minister. Yes, the Honorable Minister of Trade, Industry, Regional Integration and Employment. Honorable C.D. Keita is going to hand over these certificates to the former gender champions here. A round of applause for them. Yes. yes. Before I go on to award the certificates, I mentioned that how women are effective leaders. Look around the world map. Countries that best handle the COVID-19 crisis are led by women. <laughs> Number one among them is New Zealand. Yes. <laughs> Thank you so much, Honorable Minister, for pointing that out. In fact, we become even more exceptional at it when the seat is given to us. But now we are not waiting for them to give it to us. We're going and taking it by ourselves. <laughs> and yes, on behalf of the Honorable no, Her Excellency, rather, Dr. Aisatu Ture, this certificate has been awarded to her, the Vice President of the Republic of the Gambia, for her outstanding commitment to gender equality and women's economic empowerment in the Gambia, including her support to women entrepreneurs and young women, as well as her work as a Dolal Musol Gambia Gender Champion, signed March 2021. Honorable Minister, I'm sure you're going to uh, take this certificate on her behalf. <laughs> yes, I'll have you stay there, Honorable. Uh, we have this other one for Dr. Mamadou Tangara, the Minister of Foreign Affairs himself. <laughs> and yes, we have another one here for Honorable Fatou Kinte, Minister of Women's Affairs and Social Welfare of the Republic of the Gambia. And yes, oh, oh DPS is going to come. Or oh, the PS, yes. 
Mr. Kajali likes to do that, but yeah. <laughs> we'll have the peers take this certificate on behalf of the Honorable Minister. Round of applause. Thank you. And we have another one here for Ms. Nafi Berry, President of the Gambia Women's Chamber of Commerce, GWCC. Thank you so much. And I, of course, the budget show, I recognize your face there. Not you? Who? Oh, yeah, they look alike. You were right. <laughs> you look alike. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yes, I watched that show. <laughs> and we have, yes, we have Ms. Saini Sise, founder of the Save Haven Foundation. Saini, congratulations. Thank you so much. And last but not least, Mr. Harley Mas Job, Managing Director of Atlas Energy. Anyone here to take this on his behalf? Yes. I have another one. Thank you so much. And thank you, Honorable Minister. Thank you. Um, yes. So we head on to unveiling of the 2021 gender champions now. And to do us that honor would be uh, the permanent secretary of the Ministry of Gender, Children, and Social Welfare, Madam Rohit Bite Dabo. Sorry, P.S., we are giving you lots of trouble today. <laughs> but yeah. Okay, before you move on, but she is not here today. For the last one? Yeah, we mentioned. Okay, we have another certificate here uh, for the former gender champions. And one here is for Ms. Serafine Wakana, resident coordinator, United Nations of the Gambia. Uh, she's not around, but uh, I was told to just mention it, just so you know that she's also, or she's been crowned as a gender champion here. And we we'll just put this nicely in here. And now uh, the permanent secretary is here to do us the honor of unveiling the new gender champions 2021. Right. Thank you very much, Tatu. I hope I can step in your shoes and do what you're doing. Anyway, I'll try. <laughs> Just a second, I have to get my list, please. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Gender champion for 2021. Yeah. Yeah, I know. It's Auntie Gwenda, Auntie. So this is a break, the best time of the program. <laughs> so enjoy it. It's like when you're saying the winner is, okay. and then they go. <laughs> okay, thank you very much, um, Fatu, for handing over your mic to me and the podium. Um, my role here is to introduce the new gender champions we have. I think we should all endeavor to be gender champions because we are trying to fight for gender equality. And as, as I indicated earlier in my statement, we need to empower our women so that we can develop as a country. Without women empowerment, nothing is going to work, believe it or not. We've been allowing the men to lead for so many years and nothing much is happening. So let's take the driving seat and make a difference. <laughs> Am I right, Kajali? My he for she. <laughs> 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 
good to read anything. You're going to play the video. So. Okay. Now for this year's gender champions, um, let me first of all thank the gender champions in 2019, 2020, and then um, give you the list of the gender champions for this year. This list is not by mistake. It's not a coincidence. It was well calculated because we know these people can really do it. Even when you find them on their beds, because they have the passion for it. Um, the fourth on my list, but not the list, is um, UK High Commissioner in the Gambia, Mr. David Baldov. Technology. <laughs> and then we have um, the Turkish ambassador. I don't think he's around. No. Okay. Um, stand next on the list is Kajali Sonko, my DPS, my able DPS, <laughs> who's been a gender champion for so, so long anyway. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Miss Cissé, call my ladies, <laughs> women of substance. And one of them is Auntie Binta Sidibe. <laughs> now, yes. Yes, our other champion for this year is nobody else other than Mrs. Adu. Let's see. Yeah. <laughs> and then last but not the least, we have Miss Khadija Tumbosh Barrow. Mm -hmm. she couldn't make it. Unfortunately, she couldn't make it to this event. But we have all recognized her efforts, you know, in empowering women and then fighting for gender equality in this country. Thank you. <laughs> so, so I think my job is finished now. Yes. Thank you very much. Can we much. give them a round of applause? A big one for that matter once again. Your 2021 gender champions. And I'm sure they will make commitments that will definitely come back here again next year and get them tell us how far they've gone in fulfilling those commitments as well. Yes. So at this juncture, I'll invite them. Uh, we can start with you, Mr. Uh, Kadali, DPS. You can put on your mic and uh, uh, tell us your commitment. Yes. Go ahead, one after the other, yeah. Thank you very you much. can be seated. You can sit, yes. Yeah, okay. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much for giving us this opportunity. And um, with my 20 years of experience, um, significantly we've done a lot. But um, the commitment that I gave was to um, put up a system where we can uh, recruit uh, women empowerment officers or champions to support women associations. So I'll, my commitment is to um, orient and train uh, 14 uh, women empowerment champions across the country. That means every region, two young girls. For, for one year, that's maybe 2021, by December, probably I'll give up my, my I mean, achievement in terms of um, recruitment and reorientation. The second one is the, the scholarship award that we are working with ECOWAS Gender and Development Center for young girls. Um, I will um, facilitate uh, um, the awards um, processes to 20 vulnerable young girls within um, um, vulnerable households because they, they need to solve certain issues that can qualify them to, to, to be awarded scholarship mm -hmm. in vocational and science subjects. Right. Yes. Thank you. Uh, this coming back to that matter, I didn't even show any one person is huge. We're talking about 14, we'll come back again next year. <laughs> yes, His Excellency, the floor is yours. 
Okay, thank you very much. You can turn your mic. Yes. I'll probably speak loudly enough anyway. <laughs> um, first of all, I'd like to congratulate the, the government on the initiatives that we were hearing about this morning, particularly focused on women and entrepreneurship. Um, yeah, I'm a great believer in a, a country that doesn't harness the skills and talents of 50% of their population is never going to succeed. So I'd like to congratulate them on the initiatives that we heard about this morning, which were incredibly encouraging. Um, when I was asked to be a gender cha uh, champion, I, I was somewhat challenged, not because I thought it would be difficult, but because I would like to think that I'm always a gender champion, uh, and certainly within my organisation, the Diplomatic Service, it is part of our culture now, it is part of our circulation. Uh, but it wasn't always that way. I mean, when I joined the Foreign Office a long time ago, back in the early 80s, we probably had about one woman ambassador. Um, now, for example, more than 50% of our heads of diplomatic missions in Africa are our women, and so we've come a long way on that one. But you know, it, 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 there should be no room for complacency. Um, you know, events like this is very easy to talk about it, but actually the challenge is to do it. Um, so I will make some, some commitments, um, but they're not going to be the only commitments, because as I say, it's part of our culture. It should be part of what we do every day. But um, to harness the subject that you know, my government is very much concentrating on this year, which is climate change, and we're, we're hosting the climate talks in, in Glasgow um, at the end of this year. So one of the things that I'm undertaking to do is to advance the discussion on issues of gender and climate change. And, you know, particularly the, the, how you manage that risk, uh, particularly as it uh, relates to women, because quite often they are the ones that are worst affected by, by these issues. So we will be hosting some events that share good practice on that and actually highlight um, those, the, those uh, risks that uh, you know, are, are actually more women are facing. The other one, um, well, there's a number, so bear with me. Um, the other one is, um, you, we were talking about uh, women entrepreneurs and it's a subject that's very dear to my heart. And you know, um, I'm undertaking to host at least two events this year to actually give women entrepreneurs a platform. Um, and we can use, you know, I can use my access to actually create access for them. So we will be doing that, or I will be doing that. Um, I also undertake to, you know, uh, wherever possible, incorporate a gender lens into the speeches I make, and I, I make quite a lot of them, uh, to, to actually, you know, to, to promote, um, you know, the, the cause of women and uh, uh, the opportunities for women. And then finally, which is another subject dear, dear to my heart, um, at the moment, I got the figures just a couple of days ago, um, last year only, well, 38% of our applications for the Chevening Scholarship were from women. Um, I think that should be 50%. Um, and, you know, what I undertake to do is actually get out and actively encourage women to apply, because... Although we can, it's very easy to say, yes, it's open to everybody and everybody should, you know, has the opportunity to apply, we still actually have to overcome you know, generations of misconceptions and prejudices. And so it's not good enough to say it's open to all women, but actually we have to get out and actually encourage women to actually apply. So that's my, uh, that's my other one. Thank you very much. Thank you. We're looking forward to that and the two events there. And now uh, we have Madame Binta to also tell us how come. Thank you very much, and I would like to really add my voice to commend the Ministry and of Gender, and Minister of Trade and Ishi Trades, for really nominating me as a gender champion. Mine will be a bit different, but I hope it will be very effective, and it's also very ambitious. As a gender champion, what I plan to do is to really groom mentor, identify about 20 young women to buy for the National Assembly, 2020. Because I had the minister and both minister, and Dr. Tangara and Minister of Trade talking about women's involvement in business. But I want to really engage at the highest level where policies are made and also in terms
terms of education, having the experience myself, really, having graduated from university since 1978, in that time you have only a few Gambian women who had graduated from university in the Gambia. We even had to set up. We are very proud in um, an association of university women, knowing that education and skills, and also having established a skill center for, the, for almost two decades, having trained about 3,000 young women with skills. I want to also engage our women in professional development. Because see, all the politicians we have, our male politicians, they have a profession. You have Hussein Udabo is a lawyer. Even our president was a businessman. See, and even Donald Trump, although he's not the best reference, <laughs> was a business businessman. So we bring them together, train them, so that they can vie for this political position. And when they are up there, they will fight for these policies which encourage women in business, which encourage women to have access to finances, approve access to finances. And the, yesterday I was listening to uh, West Coast region, uh, Radio, and I had the Minister of Trade really come in to answer to some of the questions about domestic trade, how uh, Gambians are not involved in the export-import. It's mostly, sorry to speak foreigners, but how we can engage also women. Because women should be engaged in procurement. When I was at the Women's Bureau, these are the issues I was... Those key areas where you have male-dominated dominate, uh, um, people doing these things, we need to bring in the women. How many women are in procurement? How many women are in export? You know, at that high level. We are at the menial level. Just selling and buying and selling at the street corners. That's where the majority of our women are. We want to have them at the higher level doing a lot of these big businesses bringing in their containers <laughs> as such. So these are some of the things, but you cannot do that if you don't have the right policies. So that's why I'm very keen about the policies. And like Kajali said, we're working together, I'm sure, because I want to also across the region. Now the last, last time we had 19 or 18 women, but we had only three elected, and they cannot be effective. But women, as Dr. Tangara said, wherever they are, they are very strong, they are very effective. You see, you have the Akumbajates there who are doing you know, wonders at the National Assembly. We want more of them, not only to be nominated, but to be elected by the people, and we have our voice. So these are what I'm interested in. Thank you Thank so you. much. There's an activist speaking there, so concerned about policies and just getting it done. We'll come back here again in 2022 and see how far we've gone in that. Thank you, and a round of applause for her once again. And last but not least, uh, Madam Adilette will do us the honor of telling us her commitment. Alhamdulillah, I thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for this August gathering. Um, I observe all the protocols and just say thank you to um, be grateful to Bridging Gaps and congratulate them um, for this auspicious occasion and the Minister of Trade, the She Trades, you know. Um, my commitment is going to be empowerment of girls and women, which I'm already doing. And I want to include them. Uh, I've been committed to empowering um, girls in the madrasas. I was able to um, um, establish two madrasas of 225 Talibis and about 150 of them are girls. At my house, at, at my other, at, at my other side in, in Salaji. Um, but my commitment would be, uh, um, which I'll try to, um, I w want it to be achievable, is to, um, to empower at least five youths. Four of which are already being, uh, being uh, trained at my workshop to become um, self-sufficient, um, strong, responsible, full-fledged, and um, successful entrepreneurs. What I plan to do with them is to, is what I'm doing with them, like mentoring and coaching them in entrepreneurship development skills. Um, the four of them are going to be, the, the, the four of them are, are already at the, at the shop. One of them will be deployed from the madrasa to become a full-fledged um, Umrah and Hajj operator because I want somebody to, to, take, to take over from me. 
so I've already trained, I'm, I'm, I've already started, since I got the letter, I've started, I've called her and mentored her and called her parents that she's going to come into my travel agency, work with my, my staff, myself, my kids, um, to become um, the next youngest Hajj and Umrah operator in the country. So um, I want to mentor them. I want to coach them um, to be successful in what they do, to give them the, the zeal, give them the commitment, give them the, 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 um, give them the confidence that they can make it, they can become full, uh, they can become successful entrepreneurs in, 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 in fashion and design and in travel agency. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Wow. Thank you. These are powerful commitments. And I can say for years we've been talking about building bridges. But how do we go about that? I think taking commitments and not only taking them, but also taking stock of them, how far we've gone in achieving those commitments is the only way we can do this. When we have events like this, we come and talk. But who is, you know, taking stock of the things we talk about? I think that is one thing I like about this initiative. And I want you all to give our gender champions of 2021 a round of applause once again. And a beautiful package. All right, they have beautiful packages for you. Uh, they write they are wrapped already. I, I like them. And uh, they are going to give it to the 2021 gender champions, but also uh, the previous ones as well will will get their gifts. So yes, uh, they're coming now. This is nice. At least we don't just get to say, but at least we give you something, you know. So then you know that we actually gave you something. It's not a bait. <laughs> but yes, thank you. All right, so we are going to have the previous ones come here first and then get, okay, there's it's already given to me. These look like some natural made products. So yes, the, okay, yes. Yeah, they're made in the Gambia. I can see that from the She Trades uh, beneficiaries there. Awesome. So we're going to get uh, the previous um, Jelly champions also come on board. Yes, Mr. Minister, you can you can come. Okay, yes, they're already seated. Yeah, <laughs> right. I know everybody is tired of getting up and coming in. <laughs> yes, they did. So we can get. Saini is there. Yes, the minister, the PS can take on behalf of the minister. Yes, uh, Dr. Mamadou, and then Halima as well. Okay. Nice, yes. Yes. You, you people look at this, if you're seeing us live on Facebook, these are made by the uh, She Trades beneficiaries. They all She Trade products, and as you can see, they're all locally made. We have soap here. We have what? Is that a lotion? We have basically turmeric soap here, wonder tea as well. These are all local hops. They were made uh, from our local hops. And as you can see, this was weaved as well. We have the bags here. They were all handmade. Everything was made locally. So support our businesses. Well, we, we present with Agula that is marketing, yeah? You wanted to say something? Okay, yes. Uh, Antibita wants to add something on that, yeah. Thank you very much. Uh, what I wanted to say is uh, the Made in Gambia products at the level of the OIC. As you know, I am the chairperson of the OIC Local Organizing Committee. And we want to encourage all the women who are in business Made in Gambia products so that we can have an exhibition, even at the airports, the training center. Even this training center, we want to make it, because now we have a lot of conferences and we could have a place for them. We have, yeah, they can come in and we want to even have funding for some of them we are working on it through the Turkish embassy and others mm -hmm. so that they can we can encourage made in Gambia products and we can encourage them to do a lot of things which we could sell and it will boost the economy of our country and especially our women who are involved in made in Gambia products so I would like to encourage you to do that that's what I wanted to say and I, right. yeah. thank you so much having my face mask on, I can still get, you know, the scent. It's really, it's really nice. Thank you so much, and 
at this juncture now, uh, we just like to go on a coffee break. We've been talking too much. We're still going to do some talking as we have two sessions left. So they're going to be very interesting. So don't miss that. We're going to have the panel discussion, she trades impact in the Gambia. And then we're going to have the last one on unveiling of ITC's new project, COVID-19 recovery through digitalization and market access for women horticulture producers. So those of you here, Please don't go away. After the coffee break, we'll come back right here and get the conversation going. But first, we want to make sure there's social distancing in that poll. So we are going to start row by row. Uh, we'll get the um, special guests to go out first. And then, yes, we can get the others moving on. So the, the ushers are going to make sure that that is going smoothly so that we can have the space, just the space. Thank you so much. A round of applause to all the speakers. Welcome.